Yay, Friday, and welcome back to my channel where I make Rod into Tube. Um, we're done that finally for now, um, which is important. Getting the pens in the tube state, like getting the bodies of the pens perfect is really important. Um, a, it makes finishing way easier, and B, it determines the whole function of the pen. Um, like if the inside is all kind of squirrely, um, the pen isn't going to feel right. So I don't mind spending the time to get that perfect. People will ask, why don't I buy tube instead of rod? Um, lots of reasons. Uh, mainly, I can't get the sizing I need, and I can't get it in the grade I need. So I do everything, every part of my pen is grade 5. Um, grade 5 titanium, including the spring. Um, I can get tube in grade 2, but it's just, it's not as strong, and it's, it's not as fun as grade 5. So uh, we use rod um, for everything. And the price is honestly not that different. And drilling out rod is easier than drilling out tube. Sounds crazy, um, but at least that's been my experience. Anyways, let's get on to the fun stuff. So getting the threading perfect on these pens is now just become kind of a fun game for me. I want them to go together like incredibly well. I want it to feel like a telescope. No other reason than just feel. Um, I mean, the end cap, like this one here where the pocket clip pocket is, slightly important. You don't want it to wobble around. You want it to keep the you know clip nice and square, but. It's just a game of trying to get it to feel as good as I possibly can now. This will never not blow my mind. Um, so I'm cutting the end threads on the pens. Uh, that's basically the part. It's going to look like this. Um, if it focuses nicely. It's going to look like that when it's done. Um, this is the plug. It's covered in oil. <laughs> this is the little plug jig that has to go in. Um, it has to freely thread in. Um, and I use uh, basically I comp the tools in and out, um, which means you compensate for the wear of the tools. Uh, so on Friday, this is a G52 offset, it's a work, a temporary work offset. I had this compensated at five, uh, five ten thousandths of an inch um, from nominal uh, to get the fit up where I wanted. This morning I have it at three because the lathe is a different temperature, so things change. But just the fact that you're moving in increments in ten thousandths of an inch, and this isn't like, the, yeah, just having a machine that can move that is insane. This isn't a modern machine. I mean, mind you, this is a very accurate, very accurate machine tool of its day, but. It's a 50 year old machine. Um, <laughs> like you're moving in 10,000th of an inch increments repeatedly over time. It's yeah, blows my mind. Absolutely insanity. So here I am just manually removing a little burr from the reaming stage um, when the reamer comes to the back side of the pen. I have to remove it in this stage and there's a way I can get around it, um, which I'll probably do in the next batch. Um, this is the tool that's gonna come and cut the inside chamfer. But if the burr is there, when the work stop sets how far that stick out is, that little burr can move the work back a few thou and that chamfer is only five thou to begin with. So if it's too far back, the chamfer misses and then just causes downstream problems. Uh, the fix for this is just to put a collet stop in the back of the collet. So instead of referencing off the front, I reference off the back and then I can just trim it off uh, in machine. So I'll probably do that next. Speaking of in machine, I try to do all the edge breaks possible now in the machine. Um, so this parting tool actually cuts the backside chamfer on the end cap. And then the little pneumatic slide comes out, which is like my favorite feature of this lathe. Um, grabs the part and then gets back out of the way um, so I can keep machining on it. Here's that little work stop that references the end of the uh, stock. And normally the stock would follow the work stop. It would unclamp here and follow, but uh, the bar is too short. <laughs> I basically, this is the end of the bar. So the pneumatic piston had nothing to push against. So this is basically scrap now. Uh, I don't really machine any further on that. Um, I use a bunch of remnants actually when I'm just running out of the end caps. Um, I use the little bar end remnants that are too short to make pen bodies. I just make ends or tips out of them. This is my ultrasonic. Um, right now it's filled with simple green. I try all kinds of different degreasers, but simple green has been my favorite to date. Um, but I just got this Alkanox cleaner, which I'm really excited to try about. So filling up the tank with that, because I think it'd be better. Alrighty, let's try something. So this is the uh, Alkanox cleaner I bought, which is rather expensive for soap, but I'm hoping it'll help a lot for the final clean before anodizing. What I also hope it might be good for is uh, degreasing parts. So these just came off a lathe. I just wiped them down with a paper towel. They're still like, super oily. Uh, so I'm just going to pop them into the uh, cleaning thing. I don't want to have these, like, these don't need to be super, they're not even finished yet, like, these are just, I still have to polish them, I have to do a bunch of stages, but I want to get the oil off them, because they're annoying to handle, and the oil is rather difficult to get off, especially out of the inside of the pen bodies, and I don't want to polish it and, like, hone it into, like, even further into the uh, metal, because I think that's part of the reason I'm having minor streaking in some of the anodizing, so, anyways, I just want to get them decently clean, and I don't want to do it by hand, so... I've used Simple Green in this uh, ultrasonic. I use like soap and water. I've used ultrasonic cleaning agents. Uh, nothing has been fantastic. So people swear by this stuff. So we're gonna try it out. So it's at about yeah, 50 degrees. We're gonna give it a 10 minute run. And we'll come back and uh, see what we get. 
normally I would, like if these were going in for anodizing now, I would treat them wildly different. Oh, I can see a bunch of soap or uh, oil film on the top of the water. That's got to be a good sign, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, if I was going to anodize, anodize these, I wouldn't be touching with my hands. I wouldn't be, uh, take one at a time. I wouldn't put all the little end caps in there like this because they're just going to whack into each other. But they still have to be finished. So I just want to see if they get them less greasy so I can hold them easier. Oh, yeah, that's better. That is definitely better. Yeehaw. I'll let that one dry off a minute. Let's just wipe them all down so we can kind of get a sample size. So I was rather impressed with how much uh, that oil was stripped off um, just from a simple ultrasonic wash. Um, like Swiss oil is very clingy and it's super, super slippery. Um, so removing it is kind of difficult. Um, but yeah, this did it super well. So uh, I'm going to put another section of the batch in. Um, they don't have to be anodizing level clean right now. I just want them clean to the point where they're easy to handle and easy to finish and any kind of finishing stages, I'm not buffing oil further into the uh, the pen bodies or whatnot. So um, now that they're half clean, we'll call it, uh, they can go back in my little staging tray uh, and then they're ready for finishing. Um, but one thing I wanted to do is run an anodizing test to make sure that this cleaner isn't gonna impact my anodizing. It shouldn't, it's designed not to, but a test always rules that out. So I took a piece of titanium, gave it a quick buff, uh, ran it through the same cleaning procedure, a uh, quick dunk in distilled water, and then a quick dunk in multi-etch. I didn't even heat the multi-etch, I just ran it cold, um, which isn't ideal, but worst case scenario test, always better. Um, and then I just plop it into the anodizing tank, um, hit it with a quick little hit of voltage there, and that'll bring it up to bronze. You never really see uh, errors at low voltage, um, it's the high voltage where you start seeing any kind of cleaning issues, at least in my experience. So we'll connect it now and just watch it cycle through the colors till we come up to purple. And that's a high voltage purple and then uh, I had the power supply still set up pretty high so uh, I just, as I pulled it out of the tank you get that fade that's basically how I do the fade patterns on all the pens um, so here I'm just tweaking with the fade to get a kind of a nice a nice purple to teal purple to maybe almost a light green that's uh, like those colors at the bottom there the teals and the greens that's where you start seeing issues and you can see if you look closely right on the bottom of this pen there's a ring just kind of a random groove that was cut into this piece of stock um, and there's a little bit of oil contamination there. But I kind of expected that because I just gave it a quick dunk in the ultrasonic. Like I didn't leave it in there for an extended period of time. I didn't change the orientation. I just threw it, literally threw it in the basket and hit go. So um, to get that kind of result out of it, I'm very impressed. And I had a polished tip in the end of that rod, had threads on it. So I figured to put a tip on it and make some uh, cool photos. But yeah, I'm very impressed with how well that worked, especially running a cold etch. Um, promising. So I'm excited to see what the anodizing looks like. But Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.